Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special bonus episode of Films in yeah. Black and White. Uh, I believe uh, Marcus would love it if we would call this the I'm Your Daddy part of the podcast. Um, I like and this, Dad Pod, but, dad, but you know, dad whatever, pods, whatever you like. I like Dad Pod a little bit better, but you know what? We have this fantastic overlay <laughs> behind us, and we're going to call it I'm Your Daddy, so that's just where we're at. Um this is the episode where like these bonus episodes are Brian and I um, watch something with or with our kids and just talk about what it was like. Usually like we kind of cover maybe like yes. kid movies or what have you. Um, I, the last one we did was Raya and the last dragon. And we are back yes. Brian with another Disney plus uh, movie. This time we rewatched Luca. Um, so to kind of give like an overview yes like 20,000 foot perspective um try not to get into the spoilers too much but we sometimes do that so just I mean we're, we're going to I mean I think we'll get into spoilers here yeah. I don't I don't think it's I don't think there's no. any major spoilers in this movie in my opinion No not at all cuz you right from the jump you can see where this is headed y Yeah um but basically this is the story of a young sea monster mer mer boy type situation um named luca and luca lives underwater with his family um and all the while he has been told not to go to the surface um but one day he ventures out and starts finding artifacts of different um things from you know from the surface world yep. um which connects him with alberto and alberto kind of lives out on the he, this boy does his own thing but he's yep. also a sea a sea boy, mer and he boy lives in a tower and he lives in a tower <laughs> um and essentially luca is initially like afraid to leave the surface and then you know after falling alberto's cue yep quickly that fear goes away um the big culminating thing with his family is his family threatens to send him to the deep to live with all the like the dark sea monsters <laughs> yeah um and he runs away from home um and they set out on this adventure um where they run in to julia i believe is how you pronounce julia that. julia and yep. julia turns her on to turns them on to this big race which is a triathlon um and they are enter the triathlon in hopes of winning enough money to purchase a vespa to take them all around the world in um and you know that's just kind of where they're at yep. um that is the brief overview I mean, that's the movie that's basically the movie um brian anything that i left out for the like quick overview i mean there, there's a race there's a race yeah. involved but it is it is like the MacGuffin. i yep. mean it is the it plot really device is. to yep. move the story forward it, that's, yep. that's it and in like all of these movies where someone has a secret um emma's or uh, julia's dad um is like He's a fisherman and he kills things that live in the love, sea. So there's that. that. There's a love cat that. involved whose yes. name is Machiavelli, which I laughed probably yes. way too hard at. Oh, yeah. Than anything else. Um, and so they're always suspicious and they're trying to hide <laughs> it from them. So this this ends up being a whole thing. Um, quickly, just a rundown of voice actors. We may not know some of them. We may know some. Of them yeah. We may not. Um, Jack Jacob Tremblay plays Luca. Jack Dylan Gray Jack Dylan Grazer plays Alberta. Emma Behrman plays Julia. Um, Maya Rudolph plays Luca's mom. Jim Gaffigan plays Luca's dad. Um, and that's kind of what I mean, we got. My, my, we first. talked about Maya Rudolph, right? Yep, yep. Maya Rudolph plays Daniela Paguro. Yep. Um, and that's pretty much that's... what you got. The rest of them feel like relatively, <laughs> like pretty strong Italian actors. So the Sasha Baron Cohen, Sasha Baron Cohen plays the uncle from the deep. Oh, um, does he really? Yes. He's like literally one of the last one. Like... Uncle Ugo. Yep. Okay. Hey, yep. all right. I did yep. not know that, Brian. That is that is incredible. <laughs> I, I only know this because Liam, my son, was like, I want to see what happens after the movie. And I was like, uh, OK, so we're watching the credits and there's yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen, Uncle Lugo. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Well, <laughs> thankfully, Liam discovered that or otherwise Good, I probably yeah. never would have known that, Brian. Which shout is shout out to Liam. Good job, yeah. man. And shout out to Liam. Yeah. Um, Brian, just what did you like about this movie? Well, man. one, did you watch the whole thing with your kiddos? <laughs> and then the second thing is, um, what did you think and what are some pieces of it that you liked? 
so Liam was very distracted. I'll say watching this movie, okay. like he had a hard time finding a, a, a groove with it. And sure. I, I can't really tell you why he's also four. Like, yeah. you know, he's yeah, a four year old. Um, so we watched the whole movie. I enjoyed it as an adult. I just want to okay. put that out there. Like I enjoyed it myself as an adult because the animation it, it's, Ooh. it's, I don't know how Pixar keeps out doing themselves. I, I don't, don't it, it's unreal. And it, it just, it's, it has this weird claymation feel to it, but it, sure. it feels like it's out of a postcard. Yeah. And then it's like, but what if it was, it had the movement of toy story. Yeah. And it's just this beautiful, like kind of buttery smooth symphony of movement. Oh, for, and the color, Brian, Oh, like, that's what I loved about it is that the yes. colors are so vivid. So like when they are, um, when they're driving in their like imaginary Vespa across the yes. countryside and they see all those Man. flowers and all those other colors, yes. I thought those were awesome. And that then is. I thought the, um, I loved the, like the, when he goes up to Saturn and he's walking on the rings of Saturn, I oh. thought that was super cool. So yeah, yeah that animation is smooth as silk I, and the it's colors just, are so vibrant. It's on another level. Like say what you will about this movie, but y you can turn the audio off. And yeah. still enjoy this movie for sure. I completely agree. Um, and I would also say that I am I am impressed with the other thing that I liked about this is I really liked um, the actor, like the voice acting in it. Like I thought the yeah. voice acting was there. I did feel like this, and this isn't bad, but it's just something I noticed. Like I did feel like they, um, some of them were doing bad Italian accents, um, but they tried <laughs> to do them the best they can, especially the yeah. kids. So like. Um, uh jacob tremblay yeah i'm looking at the a, cast right now yeah acts he's been an actor in everything so he's going to be in the disney movie the Lim little mermaid playing the voice of flounder um but he's wow. also been in um pete the cat the tv series which my kids really like okay. um he's also been in apparently he plays um in harley quinn the tv show he plays robin um, he really? the voice acting for that so he's wow. got some like voice acting chops to it it's just yeah i did there were moments where i was like oh no man like don't do that one like <laughs> don't, don't do that accent man <sighs> yeah I, I i it did it did feel played a little bit for laughs but i also know that the director and and the writer enrico casarosa i think mm -hmm. i'm saying this right i know sure. he's italian and yeah. i would I will just I, I will take it for what it's worth that he saw all this. and was like, yep, that's yep, fine. this is what I want from cool you. So I'll just go with that at, yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Everything was just so exaggerated. And I, yeah. I, I don't know it. This I, like this is a quintessential like summer kids movie. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. And I feel like we haven't had something like this in a while. Like you can yeah. kind of say Finding Nemo kind of. But like. There's still like some really high stakes, uh -huh. and you gotta go through the scary thing, and, and like deep, I like adult themes too. <laughs> yeah, and I feel Nemo like, anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, and I feel like the scariest thing that happens in Luca is like the uncle who you can see through his skin and his heart, and like it's played for laughs. Like I think yeah. that's like the most intense thing that happens in this movie. Yeah, I would completely agree that that's the stakes seem really low, which I'm totally fine with. Like, yeah. I'm absolutely fine with there not being a whole lot of implications for this. Right. Um, and I don't feel like there were too many like crazy, like adult, deep, meaningful, no. emotional journeys that take place, which is kind of nice. And it makes it a little bit easier, at least as a dad, to have something that I don't have to worry about yeah. explaining some later. Like, if that makes sense. Well, so, and yeah, talk to me how Harrison enjoyed this. So Harrison watched the first 30 minutes. And then I think again, he's yep. also four. So <laughs> he watched like the first, like, you know, two, like yep. between a third and a half of this yep. and sort of was like, Meh. like and kind of yep. like he kind of tuned it out yep. um there's also a lot going on that day like Brittany and i were both leaving to go to a wedding so you know sure. being focused distracted with other things yeah um i get yeah, it i think he just had a hard time connecting with it but again he's four so connecting with things isn't necessarily yeah. in a four-year-old wheelhouse all the time bless you brian <laughs> um so that's that's just kind of where he was at so we will finish it i finished it um, yeah because i want to make sure you know we were oh ready i mean this finish it I, I, yeah. I mean he i i don't know because like i thought the sea monster thing would like get oh, him like hey look there's sea monsters how cool is that and he's like okay yeah. 
Yeah, sea monsters. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I and I, I feel like going back to what you were saying about themes. I I like had this very surface level enjoyment of it. Yeah, ninety percent of the way through, and then like the back ten percent. And we're not doing a deep dive on this movie yeah, no, here. No, no, no. I think I'll just jump right into it. I mean, there's like three things that happen back to back. I think the first is that they 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 help uh, Julia finish yep. the race um yep. after they win it but it's not sure if they win it and um they're the yeah. sea monster selves and everyone can see them yep. and it's this kind of really touching moment that they care about their friend it's totally telegraphed it's not surprising yeah. but it is no, really not at all For and sure. then all the families are together and they're talking about and i don't want to mess up this quote because it's just so beautiful to me but um basically they're talking about like luca luca and alberto and how are they going to work in this world and like yeah. you know with them being sea monsters and um basically someone says hey not everyone is going to accept him being luca but yeah. he seems good at finding those that will and i was like oh my gosh like yeah uh, that hit me straight in the feels uh yeah. and i it was relatable and and i was not prepared for that but like i started getting teary-eyed with that yeah for sure yeah you're absolutely right and i think that those moments are what makes it like it's it's those heartfelt moments that make it easy to connect to but yeah. without the like fear of like am i gonna <laughs> do any damage <laughs> like like because you know like even with the lion king like harrison right um, oh I've told, yeah i told the story of this before like when we watched the little mermaid 2 we did not make it 10 minutes yep. into that movie because yep. we had to turn it off because a baby's life was in danger like yes. and that's that's the same company for all intents and purposes that like did this so to have something lighter that you can say like see it's just about finding you know yourself and finding those who you can really ro run with right like, yeah that's such a low fruit and again like to your point it's just a summer a quintessential summer kid movie which is really yeah. nice so um yeah. i did think though that i thought that this was interesting that they this felt like pinocchio for a long time Ooh. Am I like, am I off with that? Like, no, I kept having this... tell me more about why you feel that way. So I kept having this vibe. So the theme of Pinocchio is Pinocchio is the story of a puppet who wants to be a real boy and essentially like live in a world that isn't his okay. um, or wasn't he would didn't like naturally like, come to yeah. be in. And yeah. he starts off like really well intentioned and he's a really like good person and he has all these good intentions, but then these other people lead him astray. Right. So for the majority of like the beginning of this, I thought Luca's relationship with um, Alberto was very much. Um, what's the best way to put this? I thought that this was very much like he was trying to lead Luca astray yeah. off of this path of doing the right thing. Does that make yeah. sense? Especially that moment where like Luke is talking about like, and then we can go to school and we yep. can see the like that's telescope. The, that's like, when the temperature changes. Yeah. And that's when the temperature like noticeably changed for me. Cause I was like, so you're, you're talking like, not, not like he's like, no, 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 that's not how it is. And I was like, this seems oddly abusive. Yeah. Like I yeah. like this maybe rethink this friendship, man. Like, cause I thought like, oh, you're going to, this is where yep. it felt very Pinocchio. -y, and he's like, oh, that's when he has to deal with the consequences of not staying true to who he is and yeah. following his conscience for lack of a better word. So it felt that way for a really long time. And then it turned out that it wasn't, but there was a large portion of this. I was like, oh, this is a, a different interpretation of like the story of Pinocchio. I that's fascinating because all I could think of was Little Mermaid. Um, oh sure, <laughs> sure. Oh, no, that's fine. <laughs> but it told no your your comparison like hits it right on the nose, and it's this different world, and you long to be a part of it. And I I yeah. feel like for me, I can see those connections that kids can make of just like man, oh, sure. I just feel like there's this world that I just I can't. I can't get to and there's that yeah. opening sequence where like Luke is having a dream and he can't break through the water but he can see yes. and I can relate to that like being a former child myself um like I can <laughs> Wait, I can understand what? bits and pieces of that obviously it's different now yeah for sure um, it obviously didn't connect with my son but I can see how that would connect <laughs> yeah with others and I feel like the oh the other thing I really want I want to talk about here going back real quick to these like hairpin turns 
is that uh, Alberto's dad, like it, he's just gone and yeah. he left Alberto. And yeah. like, we just kind of like, it's like, oh, oh. And he's just like, yeah, my dad never came back. What's up? Like, and yeah. they just kind of like keep going with it. I'm like, that's kind of heavy, but it's not like, right. They just say a matter of fact, like, yeah, he's not here. Yeah. Moving on. Well, you know, right. Um, yeah. And that was like part of the collection of like how I got teary eyed towards the end of the movie. Sure. It's like, Alberto doesn't have a dad. They win the race. He's going to find yeah. people, you know, good ones. Um, yeah. And, and it just kind of all hits you in the last 20 minutes, but it's still, it's still lighthearted and, and fluffy right. and cotton candy. Like, and I feel yeah. like that takes a certain talent. Yeah. And I also think that, you know, I think it's just making some really like in like some really deep choices of like, yeah, yeah, I could go in and yeah, like Pixar could have like, r like storyboarded out a whole cut scene <laughs> of like how yeah. Alberto's dad left. But I think they just kind of let the impact of that it, statement coupled with yep. the other imagery, like speak for itself. They didn't need to do this like deep dive into yep. now we're going to show you how he left. They could just yeah. say like, nah. He left and yeah. then you can kind of just piece it together yourself, which I, which I really appreciated. And I think this is things that like you and I have talked about in the, like the regular episodes of the podcast, the three of us right. have talked about like assuming your audience is either like emotionally intelligent enough or smart <laughs> enough to be able to put all the pieces together. Yes. So I will say maybe four year olds aren't necessarily your intended audience to be able <laughs> yeah. to piece all of that stuff together. Like maybe right. it does need to be a little bit, you know, older because there's that some... seven, eight demo. Yeah. 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 Where they could pick up on the impact of that statement and then kind of say like, Oh, so it's about finding like people finding your own version of family and finding yes. those people who you are like loyal to. And you have those deep, like emotional connections yes. to, um, for yourself and and being able to work through previous trauma probably yep. fit for a, a deeper audience maybe well and i think the other thing that i appreciated about this and like credit to my wife maggie because she was the one that picked this out and started having these conversations with liam of just like sure. hey like luca made a bad choice here um because there's a point in the movie where uh Oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking. Alberto, uh -huh. uh, he turns into a sea monster and yep. he's trying to show Juliana, Julia that they are sea monsters. And Luca's like, oh man, you're a sea monster? Get him. And it's like, oh dude, like that's no, not cool. Don't do you, that. don't, you don't do that to a friend, yeah. like even when you're going through tough things. And <laughs> leave it to my wife to be like, was that a good decision, Liam? And he was yeah. he was kind of into the movie at this point, kind of not. And he sure. knew it was bad, which yeah. was like great um and like having that conversation about like yeah like when you're friends with somebody and you need to be in solidarity with them mm -hmm. or you see them going through a tough time you, you like you don't abandon them and For i sure. feel like that's a good place to have those conversations because you're able like i'm always a fan of protagonists that are mm -hmm. like easily picked out to be flawed um oh, for sure yep and in ways that you can connect to it and not this like I'm flawed because I'm too committed to my job. Like, no, right. shut up. Like, that's not a flaw. Yeah, like a you, thing. you, you have, you need to go to therapy. That's what yeah. that is. Um, yeah. like that's beyond a flaw. Um, the biggest weakness is that I care too much. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like, and I feel like a lot of kids heroes have yeah. that. This is totally a deviation, but I feel like a lot of kids heroes just have this, like I'm strong and I care too much and mm -hmm. I'm just too smart. And it's like, yeah. No, it's good to have heroes that are like, oh no, I, I like actually treated my friends very poorly. This was a bad yeah. decision. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like Luca does that really well and he apologizes for it. Like I'm always yeah. big on like showing how you apologize because nobody yes. talks about how to do a proper apology. Um right. but and I'm I, I'm getting like hyped up here, but I like that part of the movie and how Luca no. was like you know, really, this was bad. I'm sorry. Here's how I can make it better. I, we didn't make it to that part, but I'm excited sure. for Harrison to see that part for that exact reason of showing someone like one, the impact of your actions on the people that are your friends and the people right. that are around you by not like doing some like, and that's the other thing, like, just like there's this, like 
everything's in extremes with kids characters. Yes. Right? It's either like, you know, they care too much or it's not that they made a bad choice. It's that they made eight bad choices and right. then they have to deal with the consequences. This was one bad choice that he apologized for later yep. um, and had to figure out how to apologize for that one thing. And it's OK that it can be something very in the moment, very low. It doesn't have to be extreme. It's yeah. obviously deeply impactful for Alberto because his secret's been exposed. Right. But again, I appreciate that notion of like teaching children how to apologize because it's that's just not it's hard to do as a dad. It's hard to teach oh, like man. what to apologize for. Um, brief deviation. Harrison is enrolled in tennis lessons as a four year old. Oh, so wow. Quick, Good for him. Don't advise that. That's okay. It's <laughs> not quite there yet for something as complicated. And I hand coordinated his tennis Fair But enough. today. Like he was out on the court, like, and he was just not feeling it. And they were trying to teach these kids to like hit the ball back over the net. And he just stopped and sat on the ground and just wouldn't play anymore. And he didn't oh, really talk man. to anybody. Just kind of sat I've there. Been there. And so I pulled like I pulled him off and I said, if you want to be done, like you need to be conscious yep. of other people around you. Yep. And then I had a conversation of like Harrison, like you didn't listen to your tennis teacher. Like we need to apologize because she worked really hard to put yeah. this together for you. And it just didn't quite click on that action had an impact on somebody else. So I appreciate movies like having yeah. that that opportunity to be able to like bring some of those other conversations in in a relatable way. Uh, yeah, I, that's. That is so well said. Yes, yeah. that was way better than my word salad. No, and you're fine. It It is. It's just this relatable thing. And I feel like we don't to end what I what what I kept ranting about here is like we don't teach. We don't teach like formal apologies. Like I no. feel like with kids, you're always just like, hey, you need to say sorry. And they're like, sorry. sorry. And like they know <laughs> they need to do it. Yeah, but they don't fully understand why yeah. and i feel like luca in that one sequence is just a really good visual yeah, for sure aid with that and and for anybody listening i would point to that if you're trying to have that conversation of like hey and you know like this is the bad thing he did here's how we tried to fix it and i the other thing i enjoyed about it is that it wasn't immediate like you look at no. shows like pj masks or like it's like oh whatever <laughs> it's always like yeah. I'm sorry, person being like, it's okay. We all make mistakes. Let's go fight the bad guy or whatever yep, you're doing. Yeah, or let's go get yeah. the star wizard or something. Um, <laughs> oh, God. And it's like immediate. It, right. And like this, this movie was like, no, Luca was a jerk. Like yeah. who wants to be around Luca right now? Even yeah. if he did apologize, good. Yeah. he should feel bad. Sit there and feel bad, Luca. Yeah. Just Even though he's minute. like this super cute kid. Right. Um, but I enjoyed that about, but this that movie. is also like, that is also like the subtle, like parent, like, cause there are those moments that as a parent <laughs> where you're like, Oh, I just want you to feel this for a minute, like just <laughs> for a minute, just to, just because I feel it. So I kind of right. want you to, so there is that moment where you're sort of like feel a little vindicated of like, good for Luca. He's, he's yeah. Having to deal with this. Well, like and it's a, it's also a visual and safe way to show it without right. being like, sit like, here and feel bad kid like no kid's gonna <laughs> respond to that like no not, no, no not the way you want them to <laughs> yeah they're, they're not gonna get they're not gonna get that so right. i just i don't know i appreciated that you don't always see that in a lot of children's stuff oh for um, sure completely agree and then again while at the same time this movie is just like hey there's sea monsters on a beautiful island and there's a race enjoy yourself the whole oh, movie is just a giant go. postcard Yep, they go. Enjoy. Yep. You want to go to Italy? I will say that as someone who has been to <laughs> uh, what I will assume is the like, you know, right on the there's a section of Italy um, where there's a lot of towns that look yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I was in high school, we took a band trip to Italy and we <sighs> went to one of those towns. Amazing. There was this moment that I was like. Oh no no! Like somebody went there and like drew yep. this shit because that is quite literally exactly how it looks. Like yeah. those little like seaside towns are. Yep. like they captured that perfectly. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, the I mean, I I can't speak like intelligently about the animation, but I mean, like it just man, just gloss come to life. It is just oh, for sure. it is so good. Um, there's no transition for this, but something I want to say is as an adult. Yeah, uh, I laughed my butt off 
at Maya Rudolph and oh, Jim yeah. Gaffigan's characters going into town and just splashing all the kids with water and kicking them oh, yeah. into the fountain with the yeah. sucker. Ball. You can see the like the connection and you're like, oh no, no. Like I get it. That I get it. Oh yeah. my gosh. I couldn't stop laughing. That was easily the funniest part in the movie to me of just like these two parents just like just demolishing these kids. <laughs> just, just hilarious. In a public space. Yeah, and nobody's oh, saying absolutely anything in a public space. To anybody. And just how wrong it is. And you're just like, oh my gosh, something's yep. gonna it happen. Is what it is. Nope. Nope, it's just these kids getting wrecked. Yeah, just for no reason other yep. than to prove that they're not fish people. Like, that's yeah. basically basically yeah. the whole point. I laughed at that, and then again, I laughed at the cat attacking Luca <laughs> in 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 um julia's house yeah i don't know why but she when she was like machiavelli and it yes. did that like cat thing of like it paused for a second and then just like sprung i <laughs> i thought that was very funny to me i don't oh know no that, there was some great physical humor in here i totally yeah, agree for sure for sure, for yep. sure um well i mean that's pretty much it brian yep. any notes or anything advice you'd give to, recommendations to maybe other parents or other people on watching this Honestly, I just I recommend this if you're you're not sure what to watch and this is a great value on Disney Plus. I mean, this is a theater ready Pixar movie that you immediately have access to with your Disney Plus membership. So I, I yeah. think it's a steal. Um uh, I feel absolutely. yeah, like and I just I feel like your mileage is is gonna vary. Like if you have a kid who's gonna be really captured by the visuals Our, ours were not <laughs> Our, yeah then this is this is probably gonna vibe with them ours were not um yep. for whatever reason they're also kids yep. um it also yep. may have been different if we were in a theater like i'll also true. own that very we, true yep I, if we watched this in a theater maybe liam would have been like oh man like it's the entire screen i bet like, harrison you know? would have been much more receptive then as well so y yeah and i feel i feel like yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Oh, but sure, in any sure. case, I, I would recommend it to those folks. And it's again, it's low stakes. It's a fun summer movie. You don't have yeah. to worry about having tough conversations about like, why did Nemo go missing? Or <laughs> is so and so dead? <laughs> or why can't, why can't Dory remember anything? <laughs> yeah, oh, that. Jesus. Oh, my gosh. That too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to oh, like up like where did the old lady go? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Or you know? I mean lion king like why yeah. isn't his dad answering like what oh yeah. jesus it's, like it's, yeah. you 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 don't have to worry about no, 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 any no. of that and no, like i get all. it parents to you listening i get it some days you have that energy and other days you're just counting down the hours to bedtime and that's cool that's fine you just got to get yeah. through the day and keep them alive and that's okay yep those everybody has those moments and yep. this movie can help with those because i completely <laughs> agree brian is yeah. that there are some days where you're like I need a minute to stand outside like Ben Affleck and just have nobody <laughs> yell at me um, and nobody talk to me and just yeah. kind of deal with it. So yep. Yep. Luke is a great solution for that. So yes, it is. Um, I also, again, this is a conversation for a different time, but I am very curious in the choice of Disney to put this out on plus and not a theatrical release I, because I yeah. feel like this would have been a home run. So I have some questions, but we can dime that like dive yeah. into that maybe on the, on a regularly scheduled episode for the most part. So yeah, we'll definitely talk about box office and, and what that, what that looked like. Cause I, I, I agree with you. I, yeah, I feel like this, this would have cleaned up. There's oh, nothing in the theaters sure. like this right now. And it yeah. is so safe. Like, yeah. and I mean this in a nice way, Pixar, like, yeah. It's so safe that it has yeah. such universal appeal that I can't imagine it not doing bonkers numbers. Oh, for sure. Um, like, I couldn't imagine. And like you said, there's nothing for kids in theaters right now and they are yeah. starting to open up. So yeah, hmm, just kind of curious. So yeah, um, just, again, we'll dive into that another yeah. time. Yep. Well, you heard it here first. Thanks for turning into the bonus episode. Check out Luca. This is good for, I'm just good for kids, pretty safe and overall pretty enjoyable. Yep. So give it a give it a watch. Yep. And we will catch y'all uh, next week for another regular episode of Films in Black and White. So there you have it. See you then. See ya.